Effective weight loss essentially boils down to us reducing the total energy we consume so that calories in are less than calories out. And therefore managing to implement that process into our daily lives that allows us to be consistent and that is the key to weight loss. So today I'm going to suggest some simple hacks that can help you shed some pounds. The trick here is to use smaller plates or bowls at mealtime. For example, I love my cereal in the mornings, but I've got a terrible tendency to fill that bowl to the brim no matter what the size. In fact, I'm pretty sure if you gave me a bucket, I'd give filling that thing up a pretty good go. So, by simply using a smaller bowl, I'm not simply filling it up for the sake of it. If you're spending a lot of time commuting in the car, then be sure to have a simple stash of snacks like, say, some cereal bars that will do the trick to help stave off those pesky urges for something more unhealthy. When I was at university, I used to spend quite a lot of time in the car, driving backwards and forwards to swim training, both in the mornings and in the evenings. And to stop me getting home an hour or so after training and absolutely demolishing the fridge, I would keep a small supply of cereal bars in the glove compartment just to make sure that I didn't have the urge to stop and pick something up more unhealthy. But do remember to keep your supply topped up. It's really tempting to finish off the extra food at mealtimes, but do you really need to? I mean, it could be your favorite pasta dish or even your favorite sandwich, but try and hold off loading up your plate with that extra serving of food. Let your stomach settle, digest the food you've already eaten, have a glass of water, and chances are you'll probably find you're perfectly full. Try to get into the habit of having some easily accessible healthy snacks like some fruit or maybe some assorted fruit and nuts that you can have in the office, in the car or whatever because often it's just about boredom and us wanting to eat for the sake of eating. Meal times can be a good place to load up on extra vegetables rather than say the likes of pasta or chips full of those refined carbs and fats which we're really trying to steer clear of. And this is simply because fibre is more filling. When you wake up in the morning, rather than having your breakfast, simply have a cup of coffee. As the caffeine suppresses your appetite and it also makes your body more alert and ready for your commute into work. And if you are riding or running into work, this acts as a good fat burning opportunity before having something more substantial later in the morning. Aim to avoid too many carbs later in the day and ideally those that we do have will be low GI foods. Carbs are the body's preferred source of fuel and carb-rich foods can be related on a scale called the glycemic index. And this GI scale rates carbs accordingly to how quickly they raise the glucose levels in our blood. High GI foods give us that unwanted sugar spike. Low GI foods include the likes of lentils, fruit, veg, brown pasta and rice, wholemeal bread and porridge oats, all of which prolong digestion due to their slower break time. Assuming you are a meat eater, of course, try and include some grilled chicken or white fish in your diet rather than perhaps fatty cuts of meat or processed foods that have been covered in a rich and creamy sauce, as this really negates the whole purpose of trying to eat healthily. We're all keenly aware of, or certainly should be, of the need for good hydration throughout the day. It goes without saying whilst we're doing our training sessions, but we shouldn't neglect our day-to-day -day lives either. A water bottle shouldn't really ever be too far from hand so that we can sip on throughout the day, but one thing I like to try and do when I'm at home is to fill up on fizzy water as it can stave off that urge to grab something you probably shouldn't really eat. If you're like me and have an incredibly sweet tooth then you really enjoy having your dessert after dinner, but we need to find something to stem that craving. When I was a younger athlete, we had a coach who absolutely wouldn't allow us to have any dessert. And so he would suggest that we have a hot chocolate, which at least gives you something sweet and you can have after food. So hopefully you find these hacks interesting and are able to include at least some of them into your daily routines and find out what works best for you. But like I said from the outset, this is all about consistency. So if you can make some of these hacks stick, they will help you lose some pounds. If you've enjoyed this video, give it the thumbs up click the globe to subscribe, and if you want to see Heather's videos that she did on top superfoods for triathletes, click here, and her eight tips on triathlon weight loss, click here.